I'm here at the Open University to meet Ian Frankie, the lead scientist, who's going to explain to me about the oxygen isotope facility. Hello, Ian. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome to the oxygen isotope facility at the Open University. Well, so this is purely set up for analysing oxygen isotopes. Yes, so oxygen free isotope measurements. So oxygen 16, oxygen 17, oxygen 18 ratios. And what's special about this? Is it, is it because this can do it at a very, very high precision? This is set up specifically for high precision measurements, um, sacrificing uh, all spatial resolution other than what you can sample in chips or uh, powdered samples. All right, so your pre-prepared sample is, is a powder or so on. What, what sort of materials do you, do you normally analyze here? Well, it's mostly meteorites, but also some terrestrial samples uh, and return emission uh, material as well. And it's basically, I guess, anything that, that's a silicate with, with oxygen in it? Silicates, oxides, yes, or carbonate. Okay. not carbonates though. Not carbonates, right. Do you have an example of a sample that, that might go in here? Yeah, so obviously this is a weathered meteorite from a hot desert region. And so we have to be very careful what sort of materials go in. Uh, we have to work away from surfaces uh, that might be fusion crust or weathered material. Yeah, I see that they've, they've obviously cut through there yeah. to get at some of the inside material. Uh, and even with the uh, in interior material, material can be quite weathered as well. Uh, and we have the capability to uh, remove some of that weathering uh, using acid treatments or other uh, treatments uh, to just leave more pristine material that gives us a, a cleaner signal. Right, so people could be bringing sample here and they can do a little bit of extra preparation yeah, so, to clean it up yeah, before so. it's analysed. As, as part of the Europlanet visit, uh, we can fit in about a day to prepare the samples for your full uh, acid treatment. And wow. Drying. So, okay, once I've got my sort of powders of my sample, what, what happens next? Well, if possible, we'd like to crush them up. Um, but chips can also go in, and the samples are loaded, along with a number of standards, into a sample tray like this. And we can load 15, 16, 17 different samples, depending on how many standards mm. we think we might need, uh, into a tray. Um, and that's loaded in here, then, is it? The, the samples are then loaded into the sample reaction chamber, which sits under the laser here. This is a CO2 laser that can drop down up to 50 watts onto the actual sample wow. itself to heat it up. But that doesn't get the oxygen out of the sample. We have to react the sample with bromine pentafluoride, a very powerful oxidizing agent that liberates all the oxygen out of the sample at the high temperatures we can achieve with the laser. The gases are then purified through the system of liquid nitrogen traps and re uh, other reagents until we get pure oxygen gas that can go into the mass spectrometer that's here. So, so let me just get that, that correct. It, it's processed through a series of these traps, so you've got sort of liquid nitrogen there and yeah. so on. So eventually you're getting pure oxygen gas coming into the system. Yes. Yeah. Here we do many sample standard comparisons um, of the oxygen gas and a known reference gas uh, under identical conditions so that we get the, the best possible precision that can be achieved. Uh, the gas is ionized here, the oxygen is then separated uh, through the magnetic field and collected on a series of detectors at this end of the instrument. And so those detectors are going to be collecting the three isotopes yes, of oxygen, so, so, so 16, 17, 18. As molecular oxygen. Right. And so what, I mean, we talked about precision, what, what types of precision can we get down to? Well, in terms of delta 18 typically it's uh, about one per mil, uh, and uh, similarly about 0.15 or so for delta 17 But the real key measurement we're often looking for is the 17 excess. Uh, so that's a deviation from the terrestrial type of uh, values. Right. And we can measure that down to about 10 ppm. Wow. So that's 0 0.01 per mil. And is it possible in terms of samples, I mean, if you've got really small samples, can you still use them on the machine? Yes. Yeah, so typically we don't like between 1 and 2 milligrams of material for the ultimate precision. But we can use much smaller samples down to about 0.1 milligram of silicate or oxide material. Um, so that opens up uh, ability to do some mineral separates, uh, even microgold samples, right. um, which can be analysed with very little sacrifice on precision. Brilliant. Well, can you show me some examples of some of the data? Yeah. Here are some plots of uh, the types of results we get from our instrument. Uh, this is a classic one showing the difference between Mars and Earth. Uh, we've measured lots of different Martian meteorites and we can measure quite distinctly the very small difference between 
the Martian fractionation line and the terrestrial fractionation line. What sort of difference is that? There's... That's 0.3 per mole. And so you can see the incredible reproducibility we get on yeah. uh, a set of samples that allows us to define the Martian fractionation line to about plus or minus less than 10 ppm. And remind me again, what's the precision on the eight, Delta 18 you know, and the Delta 17 you know, on that the, plot? The precision on Delta 18 you know, is about plus or minus 0.1 per mil and a little bit more on Delta, uh, oh sorry, the big Delta 17 you know, is 0.01 per mil. Wow, so that's really quite, yeah. quite reproducible. Yeah. What are some of these other plots, this one for example? So this plot shows small Delta 17 you know, against small Delta 18 you know. The previous plot was showing the excess from the terrestrial fractionation line, so all terrestrial rocks fall along this line the slope half, um, but meteorites uh, can have a, a range of compositions across this whole, whole type of plot. And so uh, fractionation processes will go up and down lines parallel to the TFL, whereas mixing lines, such as this uh, CCAM line here, is showing mixing between two different reservoirs. And so some of the meteorites here are dominated by a mixing process, then you've got other components mm. that are dominated by uh, fractionation processes. And, and I guess you can have variations all around that yes. and you're looking for these specific trends. So is this, so I see you've got all of the instruments here which clearly collect the analysis, so before we actually get to the plots we have to be able to, to analyse them. Is this actually a live feed from the uh, sample chamber? Yes, this is a behind us? live feed from the sample chamber. You can see a number of samples ready to go, although some of them have already been analysed uh, from the empty wells there. Okay, will you be able to show me one of these analyses in live feed? Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. So we've got ourselves set up. We've actually closed off the laser behind us. We've closed in on one of the samples. Just how big is this sample ready to be analyzed? So that's a three millimeter well that the sample is sitting inside. And is that all ready to go now? That's all ready to go. Laser's uh, powered up. There's reagent in the chamber. So we can go. And so this is actually gonna operate the laser behind yeah. us. So we're gonna fire the laser and have a look at this, look at closely at this, because we're actually going to fire a laser at this sample. Okay, so I'm just going to switch the laser on, and then increase the power too quickly. Wow, look at that! So this is actually a quartz sample, so all the SiO2 will be converted to oxygen gas and SiF4, both gases. So at the end of the reaction, there should be nothing left in the well. Wow, so how long normally would you be firing the laser to, I mean, you can see it glowing there. I mean, I guess that's just breaking it off and giving off the sample. Yeah, well, it's uh, reacting the sample into a gas form. Right. It takes about a minute or so to complete the reaction normally, maybe a little bit longer for more refractory samples. So now, so we've actually, you know, turned our sample into a gas. How long does it take now for us to be able to analyze it on the machine? So there's about 30 minutes to then purify the gases and transfer it to the mass spectrometer. And a further 30 minutes if you want the ultimate precision uh, analyzing the sample repeatedly to get right. the 0 0.01. So about an hour after we've just done this, we'll start to get some data for this sample. Yeah. But actually up on the screen, you've got some spreadsheets here which clearly well, show <coughs> some previous data. So this is the previous sample that was just running. Um, and it's showing the measured delta 17 and delta 18 value relative to the reference gas. And so basically any user will then get that data in a spreadsheet form that they can, they can plot up and, and produce some of these plots directly. That's correct. Well, so if you want to come and apply to use this oxygen isotope facility here at the Open University or any of the other facilities available through Europlanet, check the links on the website and apply accordingly and best of luck.